Stephen Hawking has said that he'd make quite a good Bond villain. Uh, what made him an interesting character to look at as a, himself in a feature film? What an extraordinary life. I mean, to be given two years to live um, when you're a postgraduate student with your life in front of you and to be around now, having had this amazingly productive scientific career. Um, our version, our take on his life story is quite an unusual one. It's a perspective given to, him, to us by his wife. So it's more of a love story than a biopic of Stephen. Um, but within that, you do glimpse his career and his scientific uh, thinking and achievements in quite a simple way. But the perspective we have is really from Jane's, Jane's point of view. When he's not a villain, a villain in that story, but um, certainly it has, the relationship has its complications. Do you think your experience in documentary filmmaking helped you to avoid too much dramatic license when telling this real story? Well, it was useful, as it always is, when you're dealing with a true story, if you made documentaries. Um, there's you know, certain things you immediately go to, archive and photographs that can inform the work you're doing. Um, but it felt to me that this was better as a, as a feature, as a dramatic film, because it was about the intimate personal life of a character or two characters. And a documentary would struggle to get there, not as we've been there filming the marriage unfolding across 20 years. So Anthony's screenplay allowed us to go somewhere where a documentary probably couldn't have gone. Mm -hmm. And taking license, as you say, um, but hopefully keeping it truthful and being respectful of two people who are still alive, of course, as well as being truthful to the ups and downs of their relationship. Is there a movie that you wish you'd have made? There's so many movies. I mean, one that I wish I'd made in terms of, it's so brilliant, I wish I'd made that film, <laughs> or films you'd wish you'd made because other people would screw them up. Whichever way you want to go with it. Well, <laughs> the latter would be probably more interesting, but um, more compromising. Mm. Um, there are many films that you admire and wished you were able to make you know, from a technical point of view. Um, th there's one film uh, that I really wish I'd made, Zodiac, this David Fincher film, because mm. it just feels like, again, it's a true story. Yeah. It's a un very unusual film. Um, it doesn't have the tidy dramatic arc of a film you conventionally have. Mm. It has amazing performances in it. And um, it's, you know, it's, it's a dark, interesting mm. movie. So. Um, Two films I've seen this year that I wish I'd made. One was Under the Skin, John Glazer's yeah. film, uh, which I thought was extraordinary Incredible. and so well made uh, and so kind of disturbing. Mm -hmm. And Ida, Pavel Pavlikovsky's movie, there are two films that I really admired this year and wish that I was able to make something like that. Yeah, I wish I could have made Under the Skin too. <laughs> um, how did it affect uh, your experience of directing having a character with motor neuron disease? Well, um, made the collaboration with Eddie Redmayne vital to, to the film and therefore um, it's, you know, it's a performance based film and so the fact that Eddie plays Stephen who has a progressive disability that plays out in, you know, in stages across 20 years of a timeline in our story that collaboration you know, was at the heart of, of this and Eddie's performance is at the heart of it so um, that was interesting to, to work with an actor on that level, you know, intimately yeah. every day trying to get these details to be right and for him to to be so diligent in his preparation and so brilliant on camera um, made it kind of, you know, a joy often yeah. to work with on, on a daily basis. And you frame this film with uh, Stephen's achievements but you actually focus more on his emotional life. Uh, was there a message that you were keen to share with audiences? Well, no, not really. I mean, messages feel like they're a bit sort of easy. What you want to do is tell the story as well as you can and hope that the audience has things to think about afterwards and that they can complete the film for themselves. So there's no little tidy moral I can offer. Um, but I, hopefully there's enough ideas in the film for you to have something to think about when it's done. Yeah. Um, and during production, did you wonder what Stephen would make of the film? Every day you're, you're thinking about that. Um, but at the same time, that can't inhibit you. You have to get on with the work that you're, you're doing and be truthful to what you see as the story you're telling. Uh, with the hope um, that that will pass his test, mm. and indeed it, it did. So, thank goodness. <laughs> I love the use of Super 8 footage in the film and use of that old style camera. Um, why was that important to add that different media into it? Well, not much of that was in the script. It felt that we, should, we could punctuate the film and, and make time jumps by having a kind of impressionistic look at the family life um, and the children. Um, so that was something I think we enjoyed doing. It was a burden again that fell on the actors to kind of improvise uh, this sort of family domestic life that we were filming in this sort of home movie way. Um, but it was a flavor that allowed us to understand that 
better, that family life and, and the way in which the kids were a big part of this story too. Like, what do you think science geeks will get out of the film? Well, hopefully something. I mean, it's not a film about theoretical physics. Um, and I can recommend Errol Morris's film, A Brief History of Time, if you're intrigued by Stephen's ideas mm -hmm. and his life story and how they connect together. That film exists. It's a great documentary that Errol Morris made. Um, hopefully a more general audience can engage with this, the science of this. The science is offered to you in quite a simple way. So you get a kind of idea of what Stephen has been thinking about and what his achievements are as a scientist. Um, so hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll get in touch with their, their emotional side, the yeah. scientific, scientific uh, that part of the audience will find some emotions to respond to as well as the science.